بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continuing on in our series of lectures, we began referring and sourcing and talking about the benefits of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And the second part of our lecture series, we mention the merits and the benefits of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we illustrated with the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the, some of the statements of the Salaf regarding the benefits of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and that they are the source of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. They are the source and the foundation. They are the original Jama'ah. If you go to the books of Hadith, like the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, Fath al-Bari uh, by Ibn Hajr, you will find that when they explain those hadith like لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على حق that there won't cease to be a party from amongst my ummah that continues to be on the haq, that continues to be on the truth. That they explain it, that these people, the ones who are on the truth, the original, when, it, when we talk about the jama'ah, we're talking about the sahaba, sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're talking about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. That these people are the people who upheld this deen. This is how we have the pristine religion of Islam uh, today. Allah chose them to preserve the religion. So then now we've come to the last and final section or final part of our series and we need to address and speak about the crux of the matter. The important aspect of this series of lecture which is led up to, we first made clear, clear we clarified the sunnah, we clarified that the sahaba were ahla sunnah. Now we have to, to make clear the what goes against the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Those people who make it their creed and their, the, the foundation of their religion to contradict Orthodox Islam. And this is in reference to the Rafida Shi'ite or the Rafida Shi'a and their creed. Meaning those people who reject the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ have their own religion. In, in fact, it's difficult to describe them as, as a sect. In fact, it, it is more appropriate to define them as a whole different religion. And we'll very shortly clarify why. As we mentioned in the previous lectures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be one community, one ummah, working together in righteousness, upholding the Islamic monotheism, meaning tawheed, in all of its categories. Tawheed, arububiyya, uh, meaning the lordship of Allah. Allah is one. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. All of our worship, our supplication, when we sacrifice, all of this is for Allah. When we make hajj, it's for Allah. When we pray, it's to Allah and it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's because He commanded us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes. That's the Tawheed. That's the oneness, the monotheism. That's Islamic monotheism, which you won't find in any other faith. After making clear those things, we have to mention some very important points. First and foremost, that Allah has commanded us to hold on to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَاَعْتَسَمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on, all of you together, to the rope of Allah, and do not be divided. And the Mufassireen, the people who explain uh, the, the tafsir, they explain that the rope of Allah is the Qur'an. And some of them say it's more, 
inclusive than that, and it's the Sunnah, it's the Quran and the Sunnah. And as the ulama describe, this, this difference in explanation, they call it ikhtalaf wa tanawwar, meaning that the difference in, in degrees, but they don't contradict one another when you say the Quran and the Sunnah. So the, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in that we're ordered not to divide. Allah said it. I didn't say it. The scholars didn't say it. The scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'at, they didn't say it. Or they weren't the first to say it. But Allah ordered us to, to, to be one. One community. So why is it? Afala ta'kinun? Don't you think? Don't you have intellect? Be one group, one nation, not dividing. Allah commanded this. Allah also commanded us to work together in righteousness. Work together in supporting His deen. Work together in spreading tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Work together in practicing tawheed and practicing righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَتَعَوَنَ عَلَى بِرِّ وَتَقْوَى And work together in righteousness, in, in, in piety, and God-fearfulness. Well, this is our, our ta'awun. This is why we work together. We work together for the sake of Allah. We work together in spreading good. So by accepting the pure Islamic monotheism and the Islamic creed, we are supporting the good and we're supporting one another. And we're uniting upon that. The third thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for this common purpose, which is to worship Him in Him alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُوا الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. This entails having a common creed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has espoused and practiced. And the companions already Allah ta'ala anhu followed and believed. This is what Islam is. Unfortunately, there are groups, there are sects, there are creeds which seek to distance us from revelation. They cause division and enmity between the Muslims. They call into doubt the very foundation of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and moreover the, creed, moreover the creed of Islam, the creed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in the Quran. The creed that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam believed in practice and articulated for us. The creed that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een espoused. They believed, they didn't debate. They didn't have a debate. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they didn't ask how. They didn't say, oh Messenger Allah, how is that? O oh, Messenger of Allah, does it mean power? O oh, Messenger of Allah, does it mean istola? O oh, Messenger of Allah, does it mean this? O oh, Messenger of Allah, it probably means this? Never, abadin. They accepted the nusus. They submitted to Quran. They submitted to the sunnah. They submitted and they, they didn't go beyond the bounds that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left. So we have to look and we have to reflect. And when we reflect, about the deviation that has struck our ummah. The divisions, as we mentioned in the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, where he said, If tarakat al Yahud, ala itta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al Nasara, ala itna tain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa taftariku hadi umma ala talata wa sab'in firqa. Huh. The Prophet ﷺ said, What? He said, The Jews bro broke into 71 sects, the Christians broke into 72 sects, my ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And from amongst those groups that have broken from the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam, at the head of these groups and sects is the Shia, the Rafidah, the Twelvers, the Imamiyah, as, uh, as, as they refer to themselves and are referred to, and the other groups of Shia that hold a common creed. Now it's imperative for us to understand that when we talk about Shia, and when we talk about many of the sects, that they even have branches, they have some, like the Zaydiyya, which are closer to Ahl Sunnah in their creed. But in fact, they still have much innovation. 
They still believe Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is, has a stronger position than those other sah- sahaba, which we know the tartib. We know that it's Abu Bakr, uh, Abu Bakr Umar, Uthman, wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. That this is the tartib, this is the, the, what the ummah ha- is agreed upon. But these people reject it. But we are more specifically referring to those people who have some very dangerous aspects to their creed. And we're going to mention it as briefly as we can. Because in fact it would require volumes to talk about them. We will attempt to highlight some of the main points and aspects about this sect in order to be concise as it would require, as I said, volumes to expose their deviation, to expose their deception, to expose the tribulations that they have inflicted upon the Muslim Ummah throughout history. From the time of Abdullah bin Sabah, who was a, a, a Jew, who they mention in the history books, they're mentioned all throughout the history books, that he was a Jew who became Muslim out of nifaq, to spread fitna and discord. And he is the asl, the origin of the Shia. The Shia, who do they trace the origin to? They chase it, chase it to a Jew. And this is not uh, any act of racism, but this is talking about those people with their hypocrisy who claim to be Muslim and then they spread the seeds of discord. Then they made ta'zim of Ali until it became worship. They, went, they, they, they spread discord and got the killing of Uthman uh, ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu and, all the, and, and, and at their hands and at the hands of the Khawarij they were, the, those sahabi were killed radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een this is because of the fitna that these people have caused and amongst one of the mo- main points I want to mention amongst their deviant beliefs is that they believe that the Quran is imperfect and they believe that the Quran is incomplete. And they believe that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'in, they believe that the, 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 the companions, they distorted the Quran when they, com- they left out verses and ayats, and so forth. And this is all throughout their creed. What I'm going to give you in this uh, very brief lecture, I'm going to give you statements from their books. I'm not going to go to the books of Ahl Sunnah. I'm not going to go to the books of my Shaykh. I'm not going to go to the books of so and so and so and so, but I'm going to give you directly from their sources, from their Arabic sources, and some of the sources have been translated from Farsi, you know, from Persian language to Arabic. And then I have presented them to you in English. Let's listen to one of their, one of their most very famous books, especially from the more uh, modern day scholars of theirs, uh, Hashim bin Suleiman al-Bahrani al-Katkani. He states in his tafsir, he's a tafsir, it's called al-Barhan fi tafsir al-Quran. This is from page 36. I'm going to give you the page numbers and everything. He said, know that the truth, which there is no escaping from, according to the many statements which have been related that are forthcoming, and other than them, is that the Qur'an, which is in our hands, has been changed after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moreover, those who compiled it after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, left out many verses and words. Subhanallah. Can a Muslim ever say such a thing? Can a Muslim say... He believes in the Qur'an, but he doesn't believe in the Qur'an. Meaning that he believes the Qur'an is, is a tampered with book. Then what would be the purpose of following it? Do we follow the Bible? No, because the Bible has been distorted. Do we follow the Torah? No, because the, the Torah has been changed. And this was the need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed those books. Those were the early revelations. We believe in them. But we believe that now they've been distorted. As Allah mentioned, يُحَرِفُونَ kitab, That they, they, they changed the book. They changed those earlier books. And Allah preserved the Qur'an in لَوْحْ mahfuf, فِي لَوْحِمْ mahfuf. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, the Qur'an is preserved. But these people reject that. These people reject that. As we've just mentioned, one of their scholars, he said, that there's no doubt that this is the truth. No one should, should disagree. 
that the Quran which is in our hands has been changed after the Messenger of Allah. So now they're accusing the companions of the Prophet ﷺ of miscompiling the Quran and leaving out many verses and words. That's his very statement. And it's on page 36, by the way, in his tafsir. In a book entitled Basair al-Darajat by Safar, he said, there is no one from the people who can say that he compiled the Quran as it was revealed except a liar. And no one compiled it and memorized it like it was revealed except Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Imams after him. Listen to this. Listen to this, these, these lies and statements and I'm going to try to compose myself and be as knowledge-based as possible. But let's analyze that statement. He said there's no one from the people who can say that he compiled the Quran as it were revealed except who? A liar. And no one compiled it and memorized it like it was revealed except who? Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So they make and fabricate narrations to support their ideology, to support their creed. They want to make false statements about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi referencing companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and attributing to them false statements. So they're saying that Ali anhu was responsible for compiling the Quran and he was the only one who memorized it exactly as it was revealed. And then the final statement he made and the Imams after him. So this helps to strengthen their creed. You know, these types of statements substantiate their false creed. And this is a, a sign of Ahl bidah from the beginning, is that instead of going to the Nasus and then taking, extracting their Aqidah, extracting their Fiqh, they make a, a statement and a premise, they precede the Nasus. Then they take the Nasus, they cut and paste to try to support their ideology. This is the affair of Ahl bidah Qadimin wa Hadithin, meaning from the, the earlier times up until now. And they use what? Their aql, their intellect, how, however limited it may be, to support what they believe. Instead of going back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Listen to some of their strange interpretations in Tafsir. In Tafsir As-Safi by Fa'id Al-Kashari. And this is in volume 1, page 156. And also it's mentioned in the same tafsir we just mentioned, Al-Burhan. And it's mentioned on page one, uh, uh, in volume one, page 172. Ja'far sta stated, uh, according to them, he said he is known by, al uh, I'm sorry, said he is known by Al-Baqir. Al -Baqir. He said, regarding the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the Allah Allah yagfiru an yushriku bihi wa yagfiru ma duni thalika in the Allah Allah yagfiru man yushriku bihi wa yagfiru ma duni thalika liman yasha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse what means verily Allah does not forgive those who ascribe partners to him but he forgives whosoever he uh, whosoever he does but forgives what is other than that for whosoever he pleases in this verse Listen to how they explain it in their tafsir. So in the first part where Allah says, Verily Allah does not forgive those who ascribe partners to Him. Meaning shirk. There should be no doubt about that. That nas is sarih. That nas is very clear. That doesn't take even uh, a lot of pondering. Allah does not forgive those who ascribe partners with Him. Here's what, they, what He says in His tafsir. He says, which means He does not forgive those who deny the leadership of Ali. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Look at that ta'wil. Ta Look at that distortion of the meaning of the verse. And then in the second part of the ayat where Allah says, but forgives what is other than that for whosoever he pleases. They interpret it, he says, meaning those who do not support Ali. Anhu. We love Ali, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, more than those people. Because those people go beyond the, the bounds. When they refer to ghulu, extremism, in reference to Islam, it means to go beyond the Sharia. It means to go beyond the love that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have legislated. And these people do exactly that. For those Rafida and Twelvers, one of the most important issues of the religion, and in fact they make it a pillar of Islam, is leadership or imamship. 
In their most famous book of Creed, they narrate on Abu Jafar that he stated, Islam is built on five things. Prayer, zakat, hajj, fasting, and leadership. Zarara said, I said, which is the most important of those things? He said, leadership. And this is related in Usul al-Kafi, uh, the second volume, page 18. Look at the distortion. However, Ahl Sunnah, we go back to the Hadith of Jibreel. And we go back to the verses of the Quran. Where Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni on Islam. Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi responded by saying what? He said, Al-Islam in tashadu in la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Wa tuki musala, wa tuti zakat, wa tuti sawm al-Ramadan, wa tahajj al-bayn in istata'a ilayhi sabil. That the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Jibreel, when Jibreel والسلام, came in the form of uh, a man with an ex excessively white dress, when he asked, O oh Muhammad, tell me, about, uh, tell me about Islam, he said, Islam is to bear witness that there is one God worthy of worship, and Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger. And to establish the prayer, and to pay the zakat, Fast the month of Ramadan, make the, the, pil, the sacred pilgrimage if you are able to do so. Those are the five pillars of, of Islam that are known to the Muslims. That the Muslims uh, in the early times up until now have agreed with. Total agree, uh, 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 um, ittifaq, have consensus upon this point. But the Rafah and the Twelvers, they say no. The five pillars, one of the pillars is uh, imamship. And they didn't even mention Tawheed in that. That shows you how far can a people go? How far can a people go from the Sunnah of the Prophet? ﷺ? How far can a people go from Allah, who is the one, is the only one worthy of worship, and is the one who revealed his beautiful, perfect religion and completed it? Al Bahrani states according to what is narrated, that leadership, acceptance of the prophethood of the Prophet ﷺ, the leader of the Imams, adherence to loving them, enmity to those who hate them and disagree with them, is a foundation of Iman and monotheism of the Almighty. The religion is not sound without all of that. And that was narrated in, in uh, Al-Burhan. So here he states that be, uh, the infallibility of the Imams is up there with Tawheed. It's up there with monotheism. That if you don't believe in their imams, like for example Khomeini and, and others, if you don't basically worship those people and say that those people are perfect and those people can make the halal haram and the haram halal, istahlal. If you don't believe that, then your iman is, not, is weak. Your iman is not complete. This is what they say. That's what the Rafada believe. The Rafada believe their imams are infallible and that the whole of humanity and creation needs at least one of them to be present on the earth at all times. Their imam should be established on the earth. In, uh, in, in a book called al Basair al-Darajat, we mentioned it already, Abu Abdullah was asked, will the earth remain without an imam? He said, if it was without an imam, it would melt. This is on page 508, by the way. In their most respected book, Al-Kafi, there is a chapter entitled, all I had to do was go to the title, the, the chapter, to show you the deviance in their creed. The chapter is entitled, The Imams alayhim salam, know knowledge of the past and future, and that nothing escapes them. This is in volume 1, page 261. You look for yourself in Al-Kafi. What kind of deviance is this? What kind of people could claim to know the knowledge of the ghaib? They claim to know knowledge of the ghaib when only a little bit was given to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ didn't know when the sa'ah, didn't know when the, in the hadith of Jibreel. Akhbirni on the sa'ah. The one who is being asked doesn't know more than the person, than the questioner. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Jibreel. But these people claim that their imams are infallible and that their imams know the future and know the past. 
that nothing escapes him. That's the title of the chapter. Then you could just go with Kethra. You could go with so many narrations from them if you go to their books. But I think what we've mentioned is sufficient to prove our point. Another deviant aspect of this creed is that they view Ali anhu as being infallible. And some of their texts view him and take him anhu, as being a part of Allah or sharing in his divinity and lordship. Amongst the countless fabricated narrations they attribute to the companions عنه, to substantiate their creed are narrations such as what is found in Basayr al-Darajat that we mentioned on page 81, on page 81 where they accuse Ali عنه, of saying, this is their lying filthy statements. Why do I say it's filthy? Because it's a lie. Lies are never clean. Lies are never good. And especially when you lie about the, the best of the, the, the ummah, the best of the nation. So here they, they have this statement, they accuse Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu of saying, I am the eye of Allah, I am the hand of Allah, and I am the side of Allah, and the door of Allah. And another narration is collected in Ilm al Yaqeen. They have a book called Ilm al Yaqeen by Abdullah Shabr. He narrates on Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this is the kalam of our Shaykh, Shaykh Ibrahim al Rahili, hafadallah ta'ala. He says, he says, and he is free from such statements, meaning Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma is free from the statements that Abdullah al Shibr mentioned. He said, they, they claim that Ibn Abbas said, Verily Allah the Almighty on the day of judgment will appoint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the one who takes account of the prophets. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu will be appointed as the one who takes account of all of creation. So here they've actually raised Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the status of the prophet, if not greater, because he takes account of all the creation. And the prophets alayhim after salatu wa salam were created. So they raise status. We know from their books, some of them hold Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to be Allah. Some hold Ali to be, uh, they say, uh, the angel Jibreel made a mistake in delivering the re revelation. It was supposed to be to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is what they say. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلَكَ There are countless quotes, statements, lectures, and volumes of books devoted to Accusing, accusing the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu of apostasy. And I'm just going to suffice with one. But to illustrate this point, we'll suffice with one from Muhammad Baqir Al-Majalisi, in which he states, this, is, this should be sufficient for us. And this shows you their, what is a soul, what is a foundation of their creed. Our asul of iman is in tu'minu billahi wal malaikati wal kutubi wal rasuli wal yawm al akhir. We believe in the Allah. We believe in the angels. We believe in the books. We believe in the uh, the prophets. We believe in the uh, divine destiny, the qadr, the khair and the shir. This is what we believe, the six pillars of iman. But these people as a foundation of their creed, they believe that the sahaba, most of the sahaba, except for a few, were, were disbelievers, became apostates, and were people of of uh, innovation and people of uh, who had left the fold of Islam. After that, what do you need after that? And people of, of, of deception. They accuse them of being homosexuals. They accuse uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu of zina, of being an adulteress. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلَكَ And she's free from that. And they're all free from that. radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And this is so hurtful and so evil. Our creed, here's what, what he said. Uh, Muhammad uh, Baqir. He says, Our creed regarding distancing ourselves is that we free ourselves from the four idols. They said four idols. He actually mentioned in Arabic, he said, Sanam, meaning idols, things that you worship, statues, and so forth. He said, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Muawiyah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. And the four women, he said, Aisha, Hafsa, Hind, and Um Hakam, and from all their disciples and followers, and they are the evilest of Allah's creation on the earth, and that faith is not completed in Allah and His Messenger, 
and the imams, except after freeing oneself from their enemies. And this is in a book called Haq al Yaqeen, page 519. Do you need anything else? It's sufficient from what they say themselves. They bear witness against the evil of their creed. So for reflect, beloved Muslims, on the creed of this sect. And understand the Jews and the Christians and the Buddhists respect your faith more than these people. The Jews, the Christians, the Buddhists, they respect Islam much more than these people. Ask yourself and question the person who says the Shia are our brothers, or they are really nice people, or also question the intelligence and intellect of the person who leaves disbelief, meaning leaves the, uh, Christianity, or leaves uh, some other creed outside of Islam, and then they come into what they believe is the fold of Islam, and they embrace the heresy of the Rafida. And I've known many people personally, who were once people even, but they were ignorant, even of the Sunnah. They, in, they, they adhered to the Sunnah. They used to love the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They used to love the lectures of the people who spread the Sunnah. Then they traveled to such and such country and such and such place. They get around the people and they weren't firmly grounded. And they changed their religion to become Rafidah. They come back praying in strange ways. They pray by themselves. They don't pray with the Muslims. They make takfir of the Sahaba. This is... This is a strange thing indeed, that a person could leave disbelief to disbelief. Is there any benefit before your Lord when you curse those people beloved to the Prophet ﷺ? And I'll end by this beautiful statement of the Shaykh al-Islam as he articulates this much better than I could ever begin to articulate. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala says about the Rafa the Shia in his book Minhaj al-Sunnah, he said, Allah knows best. Allah's knowledge is sufficient. There is not a group more evil than them from amongst all the sects associated with Islam, with innovation and misguidance, nor more ignorant or lying, nor more oppressive, nor closer to disbelief, wickedness and sin nor further than true iman, true faith, than them. This is in Minhaj al-Sunnah, volume 5, page 160. That is a beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be with Ahl al-Sunnah Ahl wal Jama'ah. To, to bless us to be of those people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to bless us to be united with those people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cease the dawah of those people, those people who distort the image of Islam, those people who are extremists, who go beyond the bounds of the Sharia, those people who distort and curse the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and all of their companions from amongst Ahl bidah May Allah shut their dawah down. And may Allah raise up Ahl Sunnah as was promised by the Prophet ﷺ who said, La tazal taifatun min ummati dhahrin al haq. That there won't cease to be a group from amongst my nation that is clearly upon the truth. La yadurruhum man khalafahum wa la man khadalahum hatta tukum And there will not be anyone who harms them. As long uh, up until the day of judgment, that anyone who harms them or tries to affect them negatively and distort them and distort the creed of Islam, they will they will never be successful. They can never harm Ahl Sunnah. So may Allah bless us to be amongst them and forgive us of our many sins. Anything I said correct was from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the brothers who have, uh, uh, at, uh, we saw, that have put together this, uh, the, these series of lectures and has given us the opportunity to share uh, the message of Islam and the Orthodox Creed. And may Allah bless them 
and forgive us all of our sins and correct us for any of our mistakes and bless us to be of the inhabitants of Jannatul Firdaus. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات